Hello and welcome to another poetry reading by yours truly, the shoebox poet, me, Clarence Plank. And I'm reading my book, and if you're a third head, my beer. This book came back in, out in August. It says it's basically, basically this book was something I really wanted to work on to get out because there's, I feel that there is something a little bit more stronger and uh, my poetry is a little bit strong, more stronger in this one than the other ones that I have done before. And other people say that they really love this book and everything, especially people who have bought the book. So, so while we're going to wait for people to come in or do some things, is I do want to tell you, is that make sure that you follow, you know, the friends that are in my, uh, in the caption in this, you know, check out Bill Rome Miller. And Sarah Aikenhead, Nick Hassett, and the Fire Podcast. I just posted another one, uh, another podcast. So definitely give them a listen. My friend Jenna Jinx Portraits. You know, for a limited time, though, you might want to really check on this if you're interested in anything that she does because she basically did this thing right here. This drawing was from her. So definitely get out there and check out her our page Jenna Jinx portraits over on Instagram if you are interested in getting something done uh, for a limited time though because I think she's she's kind of teetering on the, the uh, you know wanting to move on to something else because she just don't have that inspiration to be able to do that and uh, check out my friend um, Dwight and his simulated sports over on YouTube and uh, right here on Facebook. And his stuff's in the bio. My friend Aria and uh, Alberta and the Reiki sessions and stuff. Definitely check out my link tree. It has all my books on it where you can find them on Amazon or buy them from me. So just DM me if you want a copy, an uh, autograph copy. Okay. So let's jump into things. This first poem is called Misguided Youth. Drowning between two mirrors of myself and the feelings of misguided youth, I'm caught standing here trying to figure out which side of my reflection is me. Things are different, unique, and all is all I can say. <clears throat> Things are different. Unique is all I can say, being torn in half. And it talks about how you are, you're two different people. When you're younger, you're you're more headstrong and more wanting to go out and do things. And as you get older, you become more timid or you become more of like, yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> I'm not going to deal with that. And that's basically what I'm talking about here. And how there's two different people, you know, both young and old that are looking at different things in life. So. This next one is called Decisions We Take. Open doors slam shut by closed minds. These are the choices we make from different decisions we take. Time moves on, cutting grooves into stone, only to be washed away by sand and surf. The trepidation of those choices swing around a circle, unlocking doors to doors once unlocking doors. <clears throat> to doors once believed to be lost chances. It all depends on your point of view between gray skies and blue ones while sitting on a beach watching receding tides. Uh, receding ocean of dreams so now this right here is basically a uh, word prompt for trepidation and how you're going to use that in this and that's what the thing was and how you use that so me I looked at it as the open doors that we've gone through and go through in life it's like you know even though we say some doors are open and some doors are closed because of a lot because whether they are no longer there, the opportunity is no longer there, or somebody else is meant to open that door. Because we needed something to be with that, you know, something from that someone to be to open that door. So it's just like different things alone in life. Now, I mean, you want to be, you want to eventually want to look at things from a certain point of view, point of view where you're sitting back, and relaxing, and not chasing things, and you're just letting it happen to you. And but at some point you you see this that vast thing of ocean of dreams that are out there, but everything's receding because you're running out of time. Perhaps the crime scene of colors, a prediction of intertwined in chalk like other lovers. 
And this one's called Crime Scene. And basically, it was uh, for a war prompt called Prediction. And you're looking at the crime scene of uh, how things work out between the colors of being etched out or drew, you know. Version of Deception is this next one. Do you remember when we, you created me? The version of deception pertains to me. The one who you thought was your savior. All dressed in armor with a battle axe in hand. The one you ghosted because there was no better place for me to be except the villain inked into existence between the pages of you and me. When in reality, I chose my peace instead of being a pawn to your schemes. Do you want to explain to them about the, our chapters when we loved each other? Those times before I became a villain and loved you with all my heart. Did you tell them how my heart was strung together with yours before it tore away? Relationships take two people to survive. And at some point, things blurred when the message of love became a distant memory. Rust coated my armor when you removed it to see the human underneath the metal shell. Breaking bonds we shared, making me a villain you see when you scroll secretly through my media and a life you burned when you poured gasoline upon the metal case containing my soul. So basically, we're going to break this down as, as it as it appears and it was basically the versions of the session was were from to a degree but the thing of it is though this talks about how uh there was a um uh, a thing i saw on tiktok where somebody said uh talks about being the villain of everything and you become a villain when you decide to cheat that you choose things over other people, places, or things. <clears throat> I chose my peace a lot of time over certain people in certain situations because that's more valuable to me than being in a relationship and being, you know, being in something where you're having sex or being in a situation where you have to deal with people who can be, for the better terms, just kind of unhinged. So when you when I get to that point, because I decided that being in a relationship is not really worth losing myself for because so many people in me, you know, have these different ideals of what relationship should be, you know, and so many times, even where it's a friendship or a relationship or, you know, when it comes to love. So people lose that aspiration of keeping those things because people won't. People have this tendency to try and influence you into one way or another. So, now, for me, I've had several uh, situations or that have come up where people have, you know, kind of fallen head over heels for me or just whatever, and I'm just not interested in them in that way because. There are so many things that could go wrong in that situation, not necessarily with me for them, because um, it just seems like I could kind of take advantage of the things. While other people may say, like, oh, you can't, you can. So I don't care how strong you are. Certain things, especially when you mix sex into certain things or certain other things or situations, it makes it worse. This next one is called Instrument and Pain. Writing a poem is a simple thing once you realize that your pen is an in instrument of pain. When you focus it to stain the pages with tears, it's not a process of how, but one of when. In the instance of sharing thoughts mixed with broken lines that don't rhyme at times, there's no mystery to the elegance of words when they are expressed in their heart. The fingertips, the pen, in some way, you hope to wipe away memories. Of things that perhaps rewrite history outside of your mind. Other times you're writing to the ode of time and what love was like. Even if it was only for a moment where you held on to an angel, pressed your lips to hers, closed your eyes, and for a moment you stood at the edge of her world, admiring the sunset, held deep 
held in her deep blue iris. That is how you write a poem, stained with ink of regret. Now, sometimes we have that that little instance of um, of things where we regret what we do, or we grow, or we um, see how we have changed in our life, and <clears throat> And you kind of remember, and you miss those certain things. You miss the the feel of a, what, a, what a woman feels like underneath your skin when you touch her. You wonder what I uh, what it's like to kiss someone again, and those things. So that's what basically what this the poem is about. It's missing the things that you had. It's like being able to go out. And stuff I miss going out and hanging out with friends and family and or different things. So. Um, Nights of playing, you know, games and getting drunk and all that. So the next one's called Emptiness of Life. Joy, her smile, face, my mind, the feel of a woman and a lost sensation of loneliness in my only friend. It seems when you look at yourself every time I wake up in the emptiness of life. And this talks about being alone. And there's a word prompt for about sensations and loneliness. So it's basically it's what I was writing about. It's like, you know, you miss waking up next to a woman. You miss, but you also miss waking up to better things and, and wanting those things. And those things are not there. They seem like they're out of your grasp. So we're going to read two more. This, is, this one's called Shadows of Me. Loneliness is my old friend here among the shadows that dance as if it were living memories. You can almost hear the voices of people laughing in the darkness, They're speaking words only a madman can hear. It's crazy being trapped inside of this place filled with haunting thoughts, riddled with despair and dying feelings. We both moved on, and there's nothing left to say between the shadows of me. Nothing to speak of. And I try to heal the wounds, just taking things then at one day to the next. And it's basically what the shadows and me is. It's like you're looking at the old things that were a part of your life. So all this is about reminiscing about things. And those those voices you hear inside your head a lot of times when you play it out because you're thinking about people who have came and gone, uh, come and gone into in and out of your life, whether they passed away or they just moved on to another thing or, or somehow or another God decided just to take them out of your life. Um, and you look back those things and you wonder about what was the situation that happened that made those things you know. crown is this next one we place it upon her head without realizing the weight she carries a crown is made of gold and precious jewels each one unique because it's handcrafted into something more valuable than those two who know her each crown is priceless, but for many of us, we place a tag on it without thinking. Those crowns are heavy for a woman who wears it. Sometimes he has to bear it. Sometimes she has to bear different burdens that are not hers, depending on her situation. She's a father, a mother, and a woman. As a woman, she slowly watches her beauty fade from a mirror. As friendships decay, turn to sour and become a memory. She yearns to be free again, but freedom has a cost. When poor choices in alcohol can lead to a laundry list of mistakes for a moment feeling intimacy with a boy once his mask came off. And this is basically talking about um, a woman and how you replace a crown on her head. And that crown has many different things that she responds in her life when she becomes a mother or, you know, she's a woman, but first and foremost, if, she be, if she's a mother and if she's a single parent, she becomes a father because she's basically holding on to that crown. She's also working to be a, um, you know, taking care of her family, basically, you know, going to work and doing different things. So those crowns that she has to wear in those many different facets of her life, and so it can be a burden to her when she's when she's torn down because she can't find somebody who to support her or no support her in those things so again check out my friends they're in the caption definitely check out my books over on amazon check out everything that's going on i will see you hopefully again sunday if it depends it might be earlier so i'm sorry about the early start things are kind of adjusting for other stuff going on but 
Y'all take it easy. Have a good day. Peace.